Greetings to God's people from the sanctuary of St. Matthew's Church in Glendale, California. We're happy to have you with us today for our daily devotion. Let us open with a word of prayer. Lord, with your loving care, guide the penitence that we have begun this Lent. Help us to persevere with love and sincerity. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from St. John's Gospel, the 17th chapter. Jesus says, I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you would take them out of the world, but that you would keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth, your word is truth. As you did send me into the world, so I have sent them into the world, and for their sake I consecrate myself, that they also may be consecrated in truth. United Methodist Bishop Gerald Kennedy comments. A man in a novel I read some time ago 
said that he dreaded more than anything else long, dark hours of insomnia when the fears of life clustered around him. I could understand what he was saying, even when I have not experienced insomnia very often myself. Who among us does not wake up and see all the frightening things that can happen to us and be convinced that they will happen to us? If there is some way that sleep can find us and that our faith can bring us quietness and assurance, that would be good news indeed. Jesus is saying that for his followers, as they get older and see all kinds of probable disaster, they can nonetheless be at ease. My barber made a comment the other day that I will not soon forget. As I was getting my hair cut, he talked about the astronauts going around the moon. Wasn't that great, the barber asked? And I said, it sure was. And wasn't that wonderful when they read from the book of Genesis as they circled the moon? I said, I did not hear it, but I read about it, and it was tremendous. Then my barber said, you know, Bishop, that was the only book that was big enough for people doing what they were doing and being where they were to read from. What a fine insight that was. So much of the modern attempts to heal our worries are like rubbing a little salve on a cancer. It is only Christian faith that is big enough to bring the healing for all caught up in the troubles of human existence. Alfred Noyles wrote an autobiography in which he talked about his boyhood and youth. Alfred said, if ever I had any doubts, they could always be dispelled by one memory, the light upon my father's face when he came back from Holy Communion. I suspect that the finest and deepest witness to the power and reality of our faith is the untroubled heart of the followers of Jesus that we have known, and some of us know it ourselves. Let us pray. Let us receive with joy, O faithful, the divinely inspired announcement of Lent. Like the Ninevites of old, like those who practiced wickedness, who heard John preaching repentance through abstinence, let us prepare for Jesus' communion performed in Zion. Let us wash ourselves with tears for its divine purification. Let us pray to behold the fulfillment of Easter, the true revelation. Let us prepare for adoring the cross and the resurrection of Christ our Savior. Do not deprive us of our expectation. Amen.